Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Balram Prasad and I'm working with Microsoft as a senior software engineer. In earlier video, we saw what is Azure Databricks and how to create a workspace using Azure portal. See in earlier video, we created a Azure Databricks workspace using Azure portal. In this video, we are going to create cluster inside Azure Databricks workspace. And also we are going to explore some of the sample data sets provided with this workspace and how we can create table, how we can query data. So let's launch workspace. Once we are into Azure Databricks workspace, we can go to compute. Right now we do not have any compute cluster created. There are various way and various type of cluster we can create depending upon our need. In this video, I am going to create all purpose compute and then we are going to select only compute for personal level. So if we go and see that there are few more type of compute policy we can assign with our compute. Let's go and create policy with personal compute which select that personal compute then we need to provide that single user who are the user is going to use that one if we change this options policy option we have multiple options for that one for different needs right and we can go for unrestricted also multi node single node there are a lot of different uh, config for that one that's why i'm going for personal compute right now and then we can select that what is the data bricks runtime version right uh, right now there are so many versions supported on that one but i'm going to use without gpu i'm going to use a scalar 2.12 and a spark 3.0 which is a 14.3 lts ml version of data bricks so let's select that one and then we need to select the node type which node type which behave we want to use as a node so we want we can select the bigger one but for this demo i don't think we need uh, 28 gb memory and other things so we can go for 14 gb memory and remember that and costing will be charged based on what type of comp compute what is the node type and how much time it is running and other things so we have to be careful with this so I will go with that and now it's asked that terminate after how much inactivity, right? So we should always do that one and I'm going to say that hey, if I'm not using 30 minutes, right? Then go ahead and shut down for me. So it will shut down all the nodes. We can rename our cluster based on from here. I'm going to keep the same right now. And there are advanced options for config and other things which in it is script we are going to run when it is starting maybe we want to load some library when it is starting and other things that's that that we are not going to do right now so i'm going to just create compute so right now if you see this processing is happening right now finding instance for new node and inquiring so it also depends that whatever selection we have done it is allowed in our subscription or not because that point of time it is going to create all the resources so let's wait it might take a few minutes once the cluster provisioning is done and node is assigned we can see the cluster is running and if you wanted to go back and see with the all the resource group once you go to resource groups right you might notice one managed resource group so if you see this is the managed workspace based on your cluster the databricks rg and software demo is our workspace name so that's how that managed rg will be leveraged and if you go inside all the cluster related things bm virtual network and other things will be there so that's how it generates the, all these nodes and other things and there are multiple options here also we can see how many notebooks are attached and running what library is been added to this cluster we will go slowly on all of this type uh, and how to use what details it will be there uh, in the upcoming videos now let's go and try to run some notebook right so i will go ahead and create a, a folder let's see that and here from here we can connect our repos and other things but in this demo we are just going to run some queries so let's go and write some notebook and we can put the name also for notebook
So once we change the name, we can change what type of, what is the default language for notebook. Anyway, we can have magic commands inside that, uh, inside all the, of the sales magic command we can see and we will see later. Right now I'm going with the default Scala and when we create that one, that point of time also we can mention. And if we go and try to type and we can go for any command, let me try to run that command. So right now it is trying to run and this is just a basic ls command which will list all the directory. Now we can see all the mount part which is present here and now we will drill down little bit where sample data sets are stored. So this is that place where covid related data sets are there. There are some airlines related data is there, some amazon data is there, some bike sharing data is there, there are some videos related data is there, credit card fraud and other things related data is there. So we can go and genomics related things are there. So all the data sets are provided so that you can run some simple code and learn on Databricks. So for this demo, we are going to use this R data set. So if we go and now drill down a little bit more, so we can see what is it here. So we can see there is a data 00 folder also. Let's go and see data sets also. This is another folder inside. So these are the file. There are files inside C CSV folder. There will be uh, some sample Python file is given and HTML files, all the details are given. Let's see till this folder. And if we see there are a lot of uh, CSV files are present for different reason. We are going to use this diamond related thing. And as we talked about that one, we can have every, in every cell, we can say that what type of command is there. So I'm going for this one that here, this will be SQL. And I can paste that one. I'm saying that one here, drop table if exist for diamonds and create table uh, diamond using CSV and option is the path uh, that which path we are seeing. This is the path, right? We are seeing this path. We are taking this path, data bricks, data set, R data set and diamond.csv and header is true. So it is going to create a table based on this file. Okay, so in next cell, now we are going to after table has created. So let's create a new cell and in new cell, we can say that hey, this cell is also a SQL and we can say that suit tables. You can see that there is default database in default database. There is a table called diamonds, right? Now let's go into next uh, cell, right? Let's say that table describe table and we can put the table name and we can run this command we can see that it has created from c0 whatever it uh, got from first row of that uh, csv file it created with that name now let's go to next cell and we can run some query on that table so type and this is one simple query where i'm going to read this color and we are going to average out price and uh, group by the color, right? Different colors. Let's see that. This is how it looks like. It is in tabular view. If we wanted to create visualization, we can go for plus here, visualization, whatever visualization we want to create, right? Uh, y axis, X axis, all we can do. And if we save this one, it will come into that way, that all the details. So this is how easy that you can query a CSV file using uh, SQL, Spark SQL. And same thing we can do from different languages like Python, if you wanted to see the Python and other things, also we can see. In next video, we are going to learn more feature about Azure Databricks and we will see that how to create a end-to-end -end pipeline, data pipeline uh, for connecting different sources and other things. So that is what I wanted to show in this video. Thank you.